So hello everybody, um, thank you for coming. As I've just said, it's a bit disconcerting because I can't actually see the people attending, but please do use the chat function to introduce yourselves and, and, and tell people where you're from. Um, I say I'm Zoe, so I'm Zoe, I'm Chief Executive of Healthwatch Bucks. Um, thank you all for, for joining. For those of you who haven't come across Healthwatch before, Healthwatch Bucks, we are the health and social care champion for Buckinghamshire. We're here to listen to residents' feedback about health and social care services and to feed that back to provide the providers and commissioners so that they can um, make changes where needed and design services that meet, meet the needs of residents. So we're really pleased to be here today with Oxford Health. Oxford Health provides um, a number of mental health services across Buckinghamshire. We're here today to talk about the primary care mental health hubs um, that are uh, being rolled out. Um, we've got a presentation for you that Stephen will take us through. It should last about 20 to 30 minutes and there'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions. We've got a Q&A session at the end. Please do type your questions in the chat bar as the presentation um, goes along, we'll, we'll endeavour to pick them all up. The webinar is due to finish at four o'clock today. Um, should we not get through everybody's questions, if we're inundated with questions, we will make a note of them and follow these up with Oxford Health and make sure that the answers are published on our website at a later date. We are recording this webinar and this webinar will also be available on our website. Um, in the next couple of weeks. So if you miss anything, um, there's the opportunity to go back and, and look at it again. So I'm going to hand over um, hand over to our um, presenters to introduce themselves. I could start with you, Stephen. Hi there, I'm Stephen Frediani. I'm the Experience and Involvement Lead for Bucks Adult and Older Adult Mental Health. Umar, do you want to go next? Hi, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Umar Ansari. I'm a senior project manager here in uh, Oxford Health and I have been working on the design, development and delivery of the primary care mental health hubs in Bucks uh, for the last seven to eight months. Thank you, Umar. Hardy? Hi everyone, um, I'm Hardeep Kaur. I'm a consultant clinical psychologist um, and I'm the psychology lead in the primary care hubs. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So I can see there are questions. So the, everybody's microphones and cameras have been turned off. So all the participants um, are have been muted, but you have got the chat bar to ask questions um, and make comments. And we'll, we'll endeavour to pick those up as we go along. Thank you. Um, Stephen, do you want to, to make a start? Sure. Um, I'm presuming everyone can see the slides. Um, just shout if for some reason that's not working. Um, so you've heard who we are. Um, so we're going to talk to you today about the primary care mental health hubs, but also um, a few other new uh, new ideas, new services, new way of doing things. And that's come out of uh, something called the Community Mental Health Framework Review. Um, so that's looking at all of our community mental health services uh, in the country, but sort of there it's a localised project, so a localised review uh, of how we deliver mental health services in the community. So it's been described as a once in a generation opportunity to change community mental health care for the better. Um, so just thinking about these services that we have currently, uh, so community mental health teams and some of the other specialist teams have been running really for around 30 years without a really significant review of, of how we actually deliver care. Uh, and you can imagine that quite a lot has changed over that time. Um, you know, the population's increased by 10 million. Um, we've had sort of changes in the makeup of that population, rural and urban. Um, we've had, you know, more research for different changes in medication and therapy, different, different models of doing things. Um, so a lot has changed since we started these teams, uh, started the current way of working, I suppose. Um, and this is an opportunity to review things, have a refresh and a redesign of, of how things work. So we're going to talk to you about a few specific services today, mainly the mental health hubs, as I say. So we'll start with some 
what might seem fairly obvious is, is what do we actually mean by mental health? So we all have a state of mental health um, and it's, that's a general state of well-being and state of mind, something we all have to look after, very similar to our physical health. Um, but many of us, not all of us, but many of us will, will become unwell at some point. So mental illness is something that disrupts your mental state and interrupts how you feel, communicate and behave. And that really can happen to anyone. Um, most of pe most people who who have uh, mental ill health uh, have something what, what we call common mental health disorders, which, as you can tell from the expression, are, are the most frequent. So things like anxiety, low mood, depression and phobias. Um, but some people uh, get what we call severe mental illness, so SMI, so that's a phrase you'll hear uh, sort of later in the presentation. Um, and these are things like psychosis, um, schizophrenia, bipolar, and sort of personality disorders or difficulties um, and trauma related difficulties as well. So that accounts for a much smaller proportion of those with a mental illness, but obviously does account for a high proportion of, for example, those in hospital or, or use, utilizing secondary mental health services. Um, and we really do uh, want to sort of express how how much mental ill health can affect anyone in the population. It affects everyone. I think I hear quite a few people sometimes will say, um, I don't know anyone with a mental illness, um, which I don't always think is true. I think often we don't know people who talk about their mental ill health. Perhaps we don't know people who have been given a diagnosis, but I think that's similar with physical health, isn't it? We can we can have an injury, but not have a diagnosis for the specific injury and not, or not talk specifically around that, but we can still all, all sort of struggle. Um, so just thought a little bit of context might be helpful just to have a think about where we are in terms of mental health in, in the country and kind of mental health care provision. So there's varying statistics, but around sort of 19%, one in six of the population experience a common mental health uh, problem at any one time. Um, some of that data is more recent, but the, the last sort of big survey was in 2014 and we, we're due one next year. So um, between 2024, we've seen an increase about one and a half percent, and we're expecting that to increase again, um, and perhaps quite significantly because of the COVID pandemic and, and uh, sort of related knock on issues for that. But what I think is really interesting, actually, is that in the time between 2020-2014, whilst the number of people with mental ill health increased slightly, the number of people accessing service actually increased by 71%. So that's a really huge change. Um, and as you can imagine, that's had quite an impact for services. So we know that there was a record referral rate of 4.6 million people to mental health services in 2022, and that we have over 3 million, uh, so three, about 3.25 million people accessing uh, mental health services. And that's actually around 5% of the total population. So um, and just you know, some other big numbers: fourteen point nine billion uh, pounds spent on mental health funding, which is about thirteen percent of local NHS funding. Um, and yeah, we we expect things to have increased post post COVID, um, and we know that this will have had a knock on impact on not just mental health services that we see at the moment, but also on our GP services, which are are clearly already very stretched. Um, uh, and we know that sort of the the mental health and, and primary care workforces aren't necessarily increasing it at the rate that it needs to to meet uh, the demand. So we have to think differently about how we do things. Um, it's interesting, actually, um, when I was looking at uh, some statistics for this, that, that Bark Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire and Berkshire West have uh, one of the lowest prevalence of reported mental health problems uh, that should come up there uh, in terms of across the country. And we can imagine that that's down to um, a generally more prosperous area compared to a lot of parts of the country. Um, but it's still, you know, 10.9%, uh, I think it is, it's still quite quite a, a large uh, percentage of the population. Um, and we have slightly below the average uh, of, of severe mental illness, so 0.75%, so around 4,200 people um, that our services um, uh, need to cater for and need to provide for. Um, so just a little think about uh, the historical model, or, or I guess uh, we started some of these things that you're going to hear about already. So there's, this has been our model up until quite recently, and it's been fairly straightforward, actually. You visit your local GP surgery, and they will either support you and that's all you need, or you might be referred on to uh, a low level therapy service like um, uh, Healthy Minds, which is now Bucks Talking Therapy. Um, 
or if you need it, you'll be referred on to us. So Oxford Health, we provide the mental health services for Buckinghamshire and for is uh, elsewhere in some specific services. So we stretch out into Wiltshire, um, Bath, North East, Somerset and, and uh, West Berkshire with, with certain services. Um, but you... Oh. Uh, I've just seen in the chat, is the presentation not showing? Can other people, I hope you haven't all had to look at my face for the last <laughs> uh, 10 minutes. Um, can other people just let me know whether they can see the presentation? In the chat bar? So Mary can, OK. OK, okay. that's good. Thank you. Um, that's fine. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know if it's, it was a Gita. It might be the view. You might have it locked on to a yeah. certain view. I'm not. I'm not sure. Um, I will carry on though, if that's okay. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, your GP you're referred on to what we call secondary mental health services. So that's our community services, our community mental health team. Okay, are you? Uh, I've lost Stephen. Has it? Has have uh, other people lost him too? Yeah. Okay, let's give him a couple of minutes to get back. Do you um are you able to send him a message, Emar, to ask him to log out and in again? Sorry, everybody, just bear with us for a few minutes. We'll we'll try and sort this. You're back, Stephen. Hello, I'm so sorry. My internet cut out. <laughs> it's been absolutely okay, I think... fine until, uh, <laughs> I know. until that point, as always. It's uh, these things are sent to try us. Um, do you want to, um, Belinda, could you share the press? Oh, no, it's, it's you sharing it, isn't it, Stephen? I think we're on page uh, six. Yeah, I'm just trying to. Okay, there we go. Hopefully everyone can see that again and hear me and uh, touch wood. We won't have any more interruptions. Um, so yes, as I was saying, you you would tend to be referred through to secondary mental health services uh, who would provide an assessment um, and they might be able to, um, if, if you meet criteria for that service, you'd go on to, to have some support. Uh, if you didn't meet criteria for that, then often you'd be referred back to your GP uh, and there might not be too much support for you. Um, and uh, it, so I guess th there's a gap is what we're saying, and that, that's part of what this um, new model is looking at, at solving um, and supporting and, and also helping out both uh, primary care by taking the uh, pressure off GPs of having to have specialist knowledge and having to support people in the community, but also taking some pressure off um, our secondary mental health services by uh, offering alternatives uh, for people rather than those services. So um, let's carry on uh, so this is what the new model looks like hopefully you can see that diagram there um that there's essentially sort of four doors into mental health care for uh service users uh in the community and primary care um so we're going to talk about these in more detail um but we have our mental health practitioners 
Uh, we've got Buck's Talking Therapy, which, as I mentioned earlier, it used to be called Healthy Minds. People might have come across it as that. Uh, and then we have the Gateway, and then we have the Primary, Mare, primary Care Mental Health Hubs, um, which we will go into in, in more significant detail in a bit. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Buck's Talking Therapies. Um, so we know it's previously known as Healthy Minds. So this is the first point of call for common mental illness. Um, you might have heard the term IACT, which is increasing access to psychological therapy. So it aims to provide um, uh, therapy for uh, common mental health conditions like anxiety and depression um, and Buck's Talking Therapy will provide a sort of number of services for a variety of uh, different difficulties that people can have which include but aren't limited to sort of low mood, worry, phobias, panic, health anxiety, social anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, low self-esteem, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder um, and support with uh, long-term health conditions including long COVID. So they, they offer a real a uh, range of of um, therapies across uh, different type of formats like groups, one to one sessions, digitally, um, even some phone uh, support at times, I think, as well. Um, and they offer some employment support through the Richmond Fellowship also. Um, and that's mostly on a self referral basis, which is really good. So it, it's uh, you can self refer into that that kind of first port of call. Um, and like many of the aspects of this model, um, Bucks Talking Therapies have the option to sort of uh, escalate up to a, a higher level of intensity of intervention or um, to more support or uh, to step back down to other services if needed as well. Um, so that is Buck Stalking Therapies. Uh, and then we also have our mental health practitioners. So these work, um, so they're usually nurses, occupational therapists or social workers, and they sit within primary care networks. I'm sure many people in the call will, will know what those are, but those are groups of GPs, the sort of uh, GP surgeries working in sort of local partnerships. Um, and primarily the mental health practitioners are there to support GPs through advice and guidance, triage and uh, signposting, and then they will deliver brief interventions of around four to six weeks. So they work again with the group we mentioned earlier, um, which is our, our severe mental illness. Um, uh, and uh, so, so psychosis and personality disorder, um, along with a number of other difficulties. Um, but essentially, uh, people that perhaps are, are too complex to be managed uh, just by GP and buck stalking therapies, um, but maybe don't meet criteria for that sort of secondary mental health services. Um, they'll also assist with uh, sort of step up and step down, as I kind of mentioned, a lot of our services do. So that can include people being discharged from our community services, our secondary services, or even from hospital. Um, so yes, the mental health practitioners will work really closely in those GP surgery areas. Um, and, and provide lots of support. But uh, as with, again, many aspects of this model, um, they'll link in well with, with local services, with voluntary services, um, many of which we, we already know about, but we're trying to improve uh, access to. Then we have door number three, which is the gateway. So the gateway is the sort of new single point of access into secondary care. So for professionals, so it's not a self referral service, um, but any healthcare professionals across the system should uh, eventually have access to to utilize the, the gateway. Um, and what that does, it's not just a uh, not just a door. It's a, um, it's a it's a triage. It's uh, provides some form of assessment, and it's really about making sure that people end up in the right uh the right service that supports them to the best best possible outcome so people might be referred into the gateway by their gp um, and the gateway having a lot of knowledge of the, what we have on offer across the system might uh choose to uh refer them on to a more specialist service in in secondary care or they might decide that actually they're needs are best served by the hub that we're going to talk about or some of our voluntary services or some of the specific services that we have from third sector partners. So they're really there sort of pulling the strings and uh, making sure people end up in the right place, uh, ensuring that we have effective triage, uh, make sure we hopefully don't end up with too, too long a wait to see people. Um, so they, yeah, they've got all the sorts of knowledge uh, of the specialist services, which um, we can't expect sort of primary care and GPs to have. 
Um, there's also uh, some great advice and guidance that GPs can access or other healthcare professionals can access. So from, for example, our, our consultant psychiatrists, so whether that's adults or older adults, um, but also from our pharmacists, which you can imagine there's, there's a lot of complexities around medication. Um, so there's, there's a lot of support to hopefully ease the burden on, on our GPs. Um, so moving on to what the title of this presentation was about um, is our primary mental health care hubs, um, PCMHH, which is too many H's for me. Um, so they are um, uh, trying to bring together a range of healthcare professionals and support staff um, so that we can try and provide the best care and treatment to patients in their own communities. We'll have three teams across Bucks, so the, the north, uh, the southwest and the southeast, and that's based uh, really on population size. So um, each serves a potential population of just under 200,000. Um, and they aim to be proactive and responsive. Um, some of the aims are around avoiding hospital admission or referral into the secondary mental health care that we've talked a bit about. So those community mental health teams um, and also to help avoid repeat GP appointments and, and um, time uh, in primary care. So uh, also aiming to improve coordination of long term care. Um, and support for people with multiple long term conditions um, and help with faster access to services, really. Uh, so they look at addressing mental health care holistically, thinking about the, the social factors alongside the biological and psychological. Um, there's also IPS employment support uh, and a really good link up with our voluntary services. Um, Yes, so I will take you through some of the more specific aspects of that um, after telling you kind of who it's for. So essentially for those who would have fallen between that gap that we said, so need more support than traditional primary care can offer, um, but perhaps don't meet criteria for referral for that secondary or specialist mental health care. That's really what this this is about, is 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 supporting those who maybe in the old system wouldn't have uh, got the level of support that they needed um, is for those over 18. Um, and yeah, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the, the specifics of, of what the offer is there. Um, so we have psychology. So psychology input for those who are perhaps too complex or, or don't meet the, the right, aren't the right uh, sort of profile of service user for um, the Bucks talking therapies, which I spoke to you about a minute ago, um, but also perhaps aren't, aren't quite um, ready or uh, don't need the same level of, of input that you'd get in that secondary care. Um, we also are aware that we have quite long waiting lists in our secondary care, so it can support with that also. Um, each uh, primary mental health, primary care mental health hub uh, is overseen by a consultant clinical psychologist, and then there's a range of therapists below that, depending on, on sort of need for the area, um, and they'll offer assessment formulation, which is uh, sort of gaining an understanding of the individual, uh, what's led up to the difficulties and, and it's sort of a uh, an alternative to diagnosis in a way. It's really having a larger think about what's going on for the individual. Um, they'll offer some group therapy and also short term individual therapy for up to about six weeks. And again, this is those uh, for those presenting with serious mental illness, including personality disorder or personality related difficulties. Um, I think that's the main thing to say there. So uh, Dr. Kaur is obviously here who will be able to answer some questions at the end about a bit more about that. Um, we also have our service user network. So Sun is a model that's um, been running uh, in a number of places previously, but we, we've just started our service user network groups in Buckinghamshire. Um, and as I understand it, they're, they're going really well. They're having a really positive impact for the people that are attending them. Um, these are community based peer supports for those uh, peer support groups for those with personality disorders. So the idea is it's a facilitated therapeutic space rather than therapy itself. So the experience for those with um, either a diagnosis of personality disorder or who um, sort of feel they, they fit criteria for that um, to uh, support each other um, and be facilitated and help to support each other um, and to sort of, I guess, explore uh, the difficulties they're having, uh, things that have been positive for each other um, and actually just the, the sort of sharing those um, 
sharing the difficulties that they have uh, can have a really positive impact. Um, so they meet in neutral community spaces. Um, so we're really conscious of the experience that uh, attendees might have had in, in healthcare services previously. Uh, and those currently run in, uh, I've written Amersham instead of Aylesbury, but it's Chesham, Aylesbury and Wickham. Um, and there will be uh, an online group, which I don't think has started yet. And the aim of that is really to um, allow anyone, no matter their location, uh, to be able to attend those. Um, and uh, yes, uh, hopefully, yeah, that was what I was going to say. So the, um, people can attend one or more of those each week. They're not just limited to the, their local one, um, so they can access any of them across the across the county. Uh, so if I have Elmore, uh, who are providing us with some support. So Elmore is a company that was set up in uh, 1989, so I've uh, been around for a little while and their specific remit historically has been to work with adults falling through the gaps in mental health services. So it's really relevant to, to what we're trying to do with this new model. Um, so it's for those who have complex needs who might not be able to receive the support they need uh, generally for a variety of reasons, um, including not meeting criteria or being too deemed too chaotic, um, which is a word that gets used quite frequently, or unstable for treatment um, and might be struggling to engage with the traditional offer that we have. So Elm was going to be offering one to one intensive support uh, for people with complex presentations. Um, and for those that uh, might be taking up significant time and resources in primary care and uh, where that really actually isn't helpful for uh, the individual, but also perhaps not for the system. Um, and all referrals aim to be goal based, so they'll provide intensive short term support up to 12 weeks. Um, and again, aimed at people with multiple ongoing needs uh, to offer immediate support to alleviate crisis. Um, and uh, they will in, in a sort of limited number of cases offer some, some longer term support for those who require it. Um, so we have IPS employment support, which is brilliant. So that's individual placement and support. Um, it's a really well established model for supporting people with return to employment. I'm sure you can imagine that uh, sort of retaining or, or gaining employment when you've been struggling with your mental health can be really difficult, but it can also be incredibly value for pe valuable for people. Um, so IPS uh, have a really good uh, uh, sort of returns rate on on helping people into employment, but also engaging with with employers to to help people stay in work, to make reasonable adjustments, um, looking at sort of how someone could be redeployed, um, and they also do some mental health awareness training. So um, there will be uh, there will be access available into um, into IPS through through the uh, mental health hubs, uh, and they'll as I say support after a job's been obtained, but also working with employers to help keep people in work. So VCSE, which is the Voluntary Community and Social Enterprises, um, I'm not going to go into a great amount of detail about what's on offer because there's there's, there's a huge variety of things. Um, but suffice to say that the uh, part of the idea within the hubs is to really um, uh, make sure that we have good connection and um, understanding and and help people into the voluntary services that are available. I think uh, my experience from working in mental health services is often that uh, there's a lot out there, but perhaps we're uh, not great at getting people uh, into using it and, and being aware of it. Um, so a lot more coordination will be helpful with that. Um, some of our people here might be from a variety of different backgrounds, but I know we've got some people from um, the uh, patient groups, uh, the patient participation groups um, and, and a few a variety of other aspects. But generally how, how you can support with this is is asking questions and giving comments after this. Hopefully you'll you'll be doing that. Um, being a critical friend, if, if you think there's aspects of this that that don't make sense, don't seem good or aren't well um, explained or or might be need to be advertised in certain areas, whatever it is, you know, we're, we're grateful for input and, and anyone's thoughts on this. If you're part of a, a PPG group, you know, take this back, um, invite us along. We're happy to talk to or I'm happy to talk to some more specific groups. Um, but also generally just the general advice is, is be open in talking about our mental health and and that services are available and and if you um, how to access it and we can really kind of normalize that um and then any questions i suppose 
Thank you, Stephen. That was um yeah a, a mammoth a mammoth run through, but there's a there was a lot in there. Thank you. Um, so we do have one question that's come through. Um, so does the creation of the hubs mean that there will be more and quicker mental health support, or do they just shift the existing resource around? So more mental health support, quicker mental health support. Who would like to? Who would? Who on the panel would like to take that? Is that that's Umar? Okay. Yeah. Hi. Thank you uh, for your question. Yeah, great question. Um, to be honest, so just going back to the very beginning um, of um, Stephen's you know presentation, the whole ethos around um, the hubs is to make mental health care uh, better accessible to our local communities. That means um, that it aligns with the NHS. Uh, demand to offer the right care at the right time at the right place. So in terms of you know service provision, yes, our ambition aspiration is certainly to wrap mental health healthcare provision closer to GP surgeries so that patients don't need to wait on long waiting lists uh, in secondary mental health care, that they can have good access to you know mental health clinicians, uh, specialists, experts sitting beside or sitting within uh, local GP surgeries. Um, uh, you, you mentioned about you know about shifting the resource around. Well, to be honest, uh, you know the NHS is 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 quite stretched on resource. So this you know this initiative does mean a high injection of new resource, and that's quite exciting for us that we are able to now develop new roles um, and new uh, expertise, which are focused on providing mental health care. Uh, around you know primary care and within the community, so it's not just uh, you know the, uh, a matter of shuffling or reshuffling existing resource. I think we are in injecting a, a great deal of new resource um, into the um, in, in, into the community. And one such example is over the last year or so, we've had the advent of the mental health practitioners who are now sitting within GP surgeries, supporting and assisting our GPs with uh, uh, mental health referrals. Uh, again, uh, just referring back to you know uh, Stephen's presentation. Service user network is a, it's a it's a brand new service, you know, with with new resource, with a lot of emphasis around peer support, with Elmore, with uh, psychology, you know, psychologists and psychological th uh, therapy support, um, uh, you know, in primary care. This is bringing with it a great injection of uh, of new resource um, and new workforces and new skill sets. So again, you know, we are at the cusp and admin of of um, a new direction, a new bold ambition with uh, regards to mental health care, um, you know, within Bucks. It's good to add as well that I, th I think there has probably been, uh, alongside new resources, there's probably been a sort of realignment of of resources. Maybe um, I think she, I, I, I can, I may be guessing at where the questions come from because I've had that from some of the service users that I work with as well um, around, you know, are we just shuffling things around but providing the exact same thing, but it's called different things or, you know, it's completely understandable why people kind of ask about those questions. But again, if you, if you think back to the um, one of the very first slides, what I was saying is that our services have have started in a particular way and then have organically morphed a little bit, but they've still been stuck in the old structure a lot of the time. So I think this is a, a much more uh, useful and and required um, use of the, of the resources that we do have, plus the the additional funding, which kind of added a little bit more, um, because this has actually looked at the population we have and what's required in in bucks really, um, and and we've spoken with. Uh, some of the people that use our services around what's required and there's been um, service user involvement in, in developing a lot of these. So so I think there, there's an element of shifting resources around, but in a, a really positive way, as well as the addition of new things. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I've been told that I've frozen, my my, uh, my camera's frozen, but um, but people can hear me, I think, so I'll, I'll carry on. Um, so a couple of questions about the hubs. Are they face to face? Um, or online or a mixture of both? Who can take that question? I, I can do that, I suppose. Yeah, um, I think it depends on what part of the hub you're accessing, I suppose, doesn't it? Um, the, the hub itself, I guess, is a, um, I think Umar will talk a bit more about uh, perhaps the physical 
uh, aspect of the hubs uh, uh, and that being an ambition. But um, I guess the hub is almost a uh, umbrella term for a group of services that sit together and, and, and a door into those services. So um, it will really, really depend on, on what aspect of it uh, you're accessing. So the Sun groups, you know, the three of them, um, I can say that the three that are in person are in person. That's, that seems pretty obvious, doesn't it? But um, the three with physical locations, so uh, Wickham, Aylesbury and Chesham, will be the online version of that. Obviously won't be. Um, I don't know about the psychology, what the plan for that is, Adi. Yeah, so currently our psychology groups are online, um, but we do offer in-person appointments um, at the beginning or for the assessment and formulation stage or if there's a need for one-to-one. -one. Um, but this is where the offer is currently. So we hope that as the service develops, we can offer more in-person group therapies as well as time goes on and that we've got locations where we can offer those. Hey, thank you. Imar, do you want to say anything? more about sort of longer term ambitions? Yeah, absolutely. So, so um, you know, the, the, these um, primary care mental health hubs, they're essentially going to be rolled out across the entire geographical uh, footprint across Bucks, OK? So how we have um, um, split, I suppose, the hubs across Buckinghamshire are there'll be three hubs. Um, there'll be a hub in the north for the north of the county, uh, for the southeast, which is um, your your Gerald's Cross, Chalfont, St Giles, Amersham, Chesham, the whole belt, and you've got the southwest, which is um, Highway Kamalo, um, and so on. These hubs are aligned with PCNs, so PCNs are clusters of GP surgeries. Um, in Bucks, we have a total of thirteen PCNs. Um, I think in the north of the county, we've got six, and then in the southeast and southwest, you've got seven. Uh, split across those two areas. Um, so again, you know, the aspiration is to offer these services within the community. So really, we, in terms of locations, we are looking at community locations for these. Uh, we are scoping out venues such as um, universities, colleges, uh, high street um, uh, estates that are becoming vacant in different areas. Um, also, we are liaising with uh, with the local authority. Uh, asking them what you know what states they've got available, um, and again the whole you know the whole uh, purpose here is to try and make mental health care easily accessible uh, to our local population, so they don't have to travel uh, you know large uh, swaths across large swaths of the county. Um, but I think whilst we land all these different estates and 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 centres, there will be a hybrid uh, service provision. So where we are ready, we'll be offering face to face services and appointments, and maybe not, we'll be resorting to online um, uh, provision. Um, there was a question in the chat around uh, how about Sun for Buckingham, Winslow just, and, and the villages? Can I just stop you for a second, sure. Umar? Stephen, can, would you mind stopping uh, presenting Oops. so that we can yeah. see people? Thank you. Sorry, Umar. Yeah, so there was um, a question about Buckingham, Winslow and villages and also the extreme south as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Sun yeah. is available uh, um, countywide. OK, so we will share the referral email address. Sun is a self-referral service. It's quite straightforward. Uh, you would fill out a referral form um, and um, the service will uh, triage your referral form, see if you qualify for the service or if the service is indeed appropriate for you. Um, if yes, they'll send you a welcome pack and then they'll enroll you onto a series of uh, different groups. There's no limitation on the number of groups you join per week. At the moment, the service is running three groups a week, so three session, sessions a week, with the aspiration of hopefully rolling out five sessions, five groups a week. And again, if, if, you know, if Sun isn't the best service for you, they will try and find a best fit service uh, for you. Um, the whole hub model really is built around this multidisciplinary approach. So speaking to other partners in the system, speaking to other services, we're sitting just, you know, sitting within the hubs, but also sitting in, in, in our voluntary sector uh, partnerships uh, with social care, with uh, secondary mental health care. The whole, again, the agenda behind this huge, you know, like Stephen mentioned earlier, this whole robust transformation of mental health care is that you know that you know there's no wrong door essentially whoever comes into or whoever needs access to mental health care 
they receive a good quality level of provision to care for their mental health care. Uh, previous experience uh, and we've engaged our service users a lot, our, we've engaged our referrers, our GP surgeries and many others. You know, the experience hasn't been brilliant and, and, and that's the candid you know, truth about this. Uh, people are coming into the system with high expectations and so on. Uh, you know, the high uh, thresholds by services, uh, services have very an inflexible criterion, etc. So this whole new approach is really to try and uh, wrap mental health care services around the patient, make it very person centred, uh, make it quite holistic. Um, you know, there's all this continuous new research around mental health care and again, the close links between mental health as well as physical health. So all these things are coming together and hopefully I think, you know, the, the, the vision looks quite uh, promising. Um, um, you know, the coming years. Thank you, Umar. I think, um, so I think the people are having, um, well, there, there are questions about the concept of a hub, I think. So so someone's put, you know, are there three hubs, are they going to be in buildings or online facilities? Um, so I think if, if somebody could just try and explain that a bit more. Um, and then we've got um, a couple of other questions relating to um, actually accessing it, where's the one point of entry as well? And um, yeah, if you want to tackle those two first, and then we there's there's another point I'll come to after that. Who would like to? So the three, so the, the hub, I think, building online. If someone could just just go through that again, I know you've um, you know you you've attempted to do that, but I think it's I guess when I think of a hub, I think of a location one location so it's just trying to to explain that a bit more I think. Okay shall I just have the first tab of this so yeah essentially so um so there will there be in buildings or with uh, with online facilities so in terms of our okay so our clinical teams so our staff essentially will be based in single buildings there probably will be Oxford Health sites however the services will necessarily be delivered within those Oxford Health sites. What the aim is that we try and deliver these services across multiple sites, multiple locations, again, in the community. OK, so these could be, uh, like I said, you know, could be, um, you know, shops that have closed down, potentially on the high street, OK, which are very easily accessible, easy walk-in. OK, there could be um, sites offered by local authority, Bucks County Council. There could be sites that, and we are scoping this, you know, sites that are offered by um uh, the university of buckinghamshire and colleges local colleges okay so again it's you know we haven't landed it um, at the moment a lot of our focus at the moment has been around developing these services uh, you know workforce and about the types of interventions they offer um in in oxford they have got these you know these um, single points of access let's say or, or physical single points of access where there is one building or one shop front as such where everyone goes and it's like a one-stop shop in bucks we're trying something quite different okay so the hubs will be um, best fit in amalgamation of online and face-to-face -face services face-to-face -face services again we're trying to make them as easily accessible so we try and move away from mental health care solely being provided by oxford health by secondary mental health services i our population having to come to our sites so we'd rather go to them and make this really a lot more accessible for them um, Hardy, uh, Stephen, yeah. so, so, yeah. so, yeah. so, so, so that's oh, sorry. oh sorry. So that's the ambition, Umar. What have you actually got at the moment for people? Can I just say, yeah. sorry, I was just thinking that the most one of the most developed parts of the hub is the mental health practitioners, and they're based in the GP surgeries. So they're already there in in the GP surgeries, and we do have different locations where we're based at the moment. It's just that we're developing hopefully more locations so we can be more accessible as as the project continues to develop. OK, so it's, you can't see me nodding, I don't think. So I'm still oh, frozen, right. but I am <laughs> nodding. Um, so, so it's a work, in, a work in progress. So a couple of um, other points. So, so someone is asking about the you know, making the point about travel time to Wickham or Chesham for someone in the south of the county. That's or, or it's a good couple of hours. Um, there's a question about the one point of entry, which I think you've um, covered, but I don't know if you want to to come on to that again. Um, that might be helpful just to to you know how how is someone actually going to access this service? I, I guess 
uh, you know, you might correct me if I'm wrong. What, what we've got isn't a single point of entry. There's multiple points of kind of entry, but the idea is around having uh, this sort of no wrong door. So if you end up at, um, at somewhere and it's, it's perhaps not the suitable service for you, they'll, they'll be able to kind of support you into the right service. Is that right? Rather than uh, rather than having um, just one single point. So it, it will depend. Um, depend exactly what you're accessing, but the hope is that you can access exactly what you you need, I guess. You need and by going to your GP by yeah, yeah GP or self referral okay. to Sun or, or yeah. you know, if you went to Bucks Talking Therapy, which is self referral and that wasn't the right place, um, then you'd be supported on to the right place rather than, you know, what we don't want is people being told, no, this is the wrong place for you, uh, but not not being uh, directed into the right place. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a different model, for example, to Berkshire, who have one single point of access for every single service that they have. Um, but the hope for that actually is that I guess people can access the specific one that they they need and is, is suitable for them. OK, thank you. So another question um, around funding. So where's where's the money coming from for these hubs? Um, I don't know who wants to. Yes, yeah, so, so, so this was, um, I, mean, I mean, thank you for the question, but so this was all part of the community mental health framework, which was um, rolled out across the nation, uh, well, between two, two, two and three years ago. So essentially, like uh, Stephen, you mentioned earlier in the call, that this was the most robust reconfiguration of mental health services for over 30 years, okay, and, and why NHS decided to take this course of uh, action uh, was because of changing demographic, you know, our populations were living longer. There were more multiple, you know, um, uh, patients coming with not one uh, mental health presentation. There was increasing acuity, uh, increasing uh, complexity around cases. Um, so really, I think they needed a new approach towards mental health care. So there was quite quite a heavy investment um, by national government towards mental health care provision, and the hubs are essentially one of those different. Um, services um, that, that are being um, delivered as part of the wider mental, um, community mental health framework program. OK, thank you, Mark. Um, so um, a couple of other points about PCN. So the PCN um, mental health professionals are already up and running. The hub concept sounds aspirational. When does it become reality? Um, and then a second question. Um, how many Bucks PCNs have a dedicated mental health professional? Hardy, do you want to speak mm -hmm. about aspiration yeah. and where we are? The could you, could you, sorry, can you just ask one question at a time? I'm not sure which one. Yeah, you sure, sure, but, sure yeah. sorry. Uh, so the, so the hub concept sounds aspirational. When does it sound, when does it become reality? Okay. Well, it's already up and running. Um, so we're now open across the county, like southwest, southeast and north. Um, we are in the early stages. So like in psychology, for example, we're offering group therapies as well as some individual support. Um, we're hoping as time goes on and as we go into the second phase, we'll be developing further offers and support, further therapeutic interventions within the hub, but we are up and running already. OK, and then almost a follow up to that. So in terms of PCNs, how many um, have a dedicated mental health professional? Do you want to answer that, Uma? Yeah, so um, yeah. we've got 13 PCNs uh, in Bucks, and I believe, I think anything between nine and 11 of them have got mental health practitioners. Um, obviously, NHS has, you know, uh, huge challenges around recruitment. OK, so, you know, again, you know, the aim was um, to have um, all 13 PCNs uh, having the mental health practitioner resource. Um, but, but you know, having said that, what we're looking at about 85% coverage at the moment and just a couple more roles uh, posts to fill. OK. Thank you. Um, and then the role of community mental health teams and crisis teams, how will they fit in to the model? I suppose they're, they're the same role as they are uh, now, uh, but hopefully with uh, the ability to feed 
into the hubs and into the other aspects of, of the model more generally. Um, and with the hope that by providing some of this uh, input a little bit sooner in the community that maybe we'll, um, well, you know, the, the main aim is obviously to support the people who use our services better, um, but hopefully the knock on effect of that will be sort of a decreased rate of referrals into the community mental health teams because okay. um, we'll actually have been able to have the the input uh, earlier and in, in you know, a more useful way for people for certain certain groups, particularly um, the crisis team will, will sort of pick up things as as it does. Um, I guess the crisis team tends really to sit a little bit beyond the community team uh, in terms of a step up of, of um, uh, level of intervention and, and intensity of intervention uh, and risk it kind of deals with. But but we know people will still be referred into the crisis team um, if they need that support. Um, I would imagine Umar might be able to correct me on this if I'm wrong, but I'd imagine that the that kind of all aspects of our system can refer into the community, the crisis team, um, and you use that resource. Um, uh, but but the aim really, I guess, with all of this and the, with all of our services generally, I really is to stop people getting to the point of crisis um, and to stop people needing hospital admission. Um, but hopefully, by getting to people earlier intervening earlier intervening on a more you know we said a more community-based level um but but just just on what what people actually need and that's hopefully what what the, what this is is and that's what people have told us is is this is what they need and this is what they want so um the aim is really to stop people getting there but it's still it's still there it's not changing it's not decreasing in any way it's hopefully having a little bit of pressure taken off it which can lead to sort of better results as well Okay, thank you. Um, and further publicity in comms. So, what what else is planned so that patients and and people needing the services, you know, are, are aware of what and and what's available and, and when it's available? Yeah. So uh, again, thank you for the question. So, we have been developing quite a few comms. A lot of our comms are actually targeted uh, at GPs at the moment. Okay. So, what the GPs um, are going to be receiving over the next four weeks um, are going to be a service catalogue. Essentially what the service catalogue is going to be doing is explaining the different component services that sit within these hubs. That's one. Um, um, GPs will be issued with referral information. OK, um, there will be some further comms going around just for members of the public about what services are available to them. Um, you know, Sun and other services, they have published their own service specific leaflets, flyers and so on. Um, what you will be seeing uh, as well uh, over the next four to eight weeks are, is going to be increased visibility of these services on the Oxford Health internet, on the website. So you should be able to visit our uh, website and see what services are available to you, um, how to contact services, um, and you know, again, some some loose criteria around around what these services or who they work with. Is there a bucks a bucks um, page, uh, Umar, on the Oxford Health website? There, there, there will be, okay. there will be, yeah, yeah we are, we're developing something in the pipeline, yes. Um, and, a, and a plea for, for any comms to be sent to PPGs um, in the chat. Yep. Um, thank you. So another question about referral wait times. So any idea of, of what, what that looks like at the moment? I mean, currently we don't have, um, you'd be seeing very quickly within weeks because as we've just launched, we don't have wait times at the moment. And the hope is the model set up in a way to try and keep waiting times minimal. Um, we have rolling groups. So if you're referred for a therapeutic intervention, there might be a wait for when the next group starts, but you'd know exactly when it is. Um, so it could be it could be up to 12 weeks if the group's just started. Um, but we'll have a range of interventions that you can get into quite quickly. Um, okay, so someone someone can access something whilst they're waiting for one of those groups to start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I've run out of questions in the chat. If anyone has anything, please put it in quickly. Um, but otherwise. Um, I think we'll we'll come 
we'll draw it to a close. Um, huge thank you to our panel and presenters for coming along and and trying to um, explain explain the concept of, of the hubs. It's um, I think it's been really helpful. And um, we are going to run a poll um, to see um, how useful people found it. Um, so, Belinda, if you're able to start running that now. We have had our fair share of technical issues on this, so um, I'm not confident about this poll. <laughs> but if you if you have a go um, answering the questions, that would be really helpful. Um, they, it's uh, we'd, we'd like to see if people feel better informed. Um, we hope they do after following after this presentation, but also if people would find us running more of these kind of webinars useful in the future. I'll just let people respond to that. Um, and we're you know really happy to to hear people's feedback. So any anything uh, more in depth that you want to say, um, please do email us. Um, once again, thank you to our our panel and and to Stephen in particular for presenting. Thank you. Um, can we have the final slide, Belinda? That's just our details, really. Health Watch boxes details and a plea for people to sign up to our newsletter if you haven't already. Um, but otherwise, I think we'll say goodbye. Thank you for your time, everybody, and thank you for attending. Nice to see so many people here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Have we got a final slide? No. OK, I'll give up on that. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> everybody. Oh, there we go. <laughs>